Okay, let's continue on with the um, volume question. Look at this question, I want you to read it and then pause and try it and then we can work it out together, okay? So Wendy wanted to have a rectangular pool at her backyard. The diameter is 12 feet long, 8 feet wide, and 5 feet deep. How much water is needed to fill her pool if 9 gallons of water occupy 1 cubic feet of the pool? Alright, so give that a try and uh, we'll take it up in about a minute. Okay, so let's give it a try. The first thing we need to figure out is the volume of this pool. So it looked like a um, rectangular um, shaped, uh, three-dimensional shape pool. So we have a length times width times height. Okay, so it's a rectangular box pool. And the length is 12 times the width is 8 times the height is 5. So it's 8 times 5 is 40 times 12 is 480 feet, cubic feet. All right? Now, that, that's not really the answer, the, question, the answer that we wanted because really what you want to know is how much water is needed to fill her pool if 9 gallon of water occupy 1 cubic feet. Now notice we have 480 cubic feet. So we know that 9 gallon occupy 1 cubic feet. So all we need to do is now take that cubic feet and convert that into 9 gallon. Okay, just replace cubic 1 cubic feet into 9 gallon water. And from that, let me see my calculator would tell me uh, 480 times 9 that means the pool would need 4,320 gallon of water. Wow, that's a lot of water, but yeah, so it's also a very big pool as well. So it may take a couple of days to fill that water up in our pool. All right, let's look at another question here. Okay, let's read that together and see if you can answer that. A, cylind a cylinder jug of water holds three liter of water. It has a, a height of 30 centimeter and a volume of uh, 3,000 cubic centimeter. What is its diameter? Okay, so I want you to pause the video and give it a try and we'll take it up. Okay, let's take it up. So uh, the best thing is always to draw a diagram if you don't fully understand it to kind of have a picture in your head what they're asking. Okay, so you have this jug that is a cylinder. Okay. And they're telling you that, I guess it holds three liter of water. Well, I don't know if that's relevant or not. I don't think it's relevant to this question. Sometimes, you know, they give you all these um, uh, information that may not be pertaining to the question. So we we'll ignore that for now and we'll look at the other ones, okay? Because really we want to know is a diameter. So do you remember the uh, volume of a cylinder, the formula? It was pi r times height, correct? That's the volume of a cylinder. Okay, so you always write the formula down, uh, if you recall, from um, the cylinder volume. Okay, so if you remember that. So here I have a diagram of the cylinder. They're telling you that the height from here to here okay, is 30 centimeters. So we know already from the formula that it's 30 centimeters for the height. Okay, so we can put that in there. We also know the volume too. The volume is um, the volume is uh, three thousand centimeter. Okay. All right. So on this side, we know the volume is three thousand. We know the height. See, what we want to know, what they want to ask you is the diameter d across there. But the formula won't give us a radius. But remember. 2 radius equal to diameter. So if we can figure out what the radius is, we can figure out the diameter. So let's solve that. Okay, the first thing to do is, you see that 30? You bring it over, okay, by dividing into 3,000. Oops. 
right? So we have 3,000 divided by 30, that will give you 100. Okay? And remember, um, pi is actually 3.14, so we're going to divide, let's see if I have enough room here. Let's move to this side here. I'm going to try to erase part of this <coughs> and use a spot here. Okay. Right, we have, um, for example, so far 100 equal to pi r squared because we divide, as you call, uh, 3,000 by 30. Okay. And then we convert that into 100, and 100 equal to pi r squared. And then we know pi is 3.14, okay, approximately. And we divide, bring uh, 3.14 over to the other side, okay. Divide by 3.14, now we need to find this r equal to r squared still. So let's see, 100 divided by 3.14, uh, 100 divided by 3.14 will give you approximately, I'm going to round it, okay, so R squared, okay, still we have on this side, um, 31 point, uh, I'd say uh, 8, okay, and now we have R squared equal to 31.8. So using your calculator to solve for r, you square root, okay? Because we want to convert that r squared to isolate r itself. So in order to do that, we bring over the square, to become square root, 31.8. So um, in your calculator, uh, let's see if you can see that. Uh, let's see. Uh, here, okay, that's a square root. So you want to use that button there. So he's going to take 31.8 square root that using that button and you get um, R as being 5.6 and that unit was centimeter. Okay, and remember, um, because we're talking about D, it's 2R twice as much, so now we are talking about uh, 11.2 centimeter because it's 5.6 times uh, 2, see, it's like 2 times 5.6, okay? And that gives you 11.2. Uh, there we go. And so that's the answer. So the um, answer is 11.2 centimeters.